Flux just got even better. In this video, I'll guide you through everything you need to know about choosing the best Flux model for your VRAM graphics card. We'll go through each model, from high-end GPUs to low-end ones, so you can find the perfect match for your setup. What's great about the new Flux Q models is that they now support LoRaS, making it easier to customize your images. These models also offer advanced features like improved text encoders, faster image generation, and better compatibility with ComfyUI's workflows, meaning you can enjoy high-quality results even on lower-end GPUs. So, let's get started. If you're using a high VRAM graphics card like an NVIDIA RTX 3090, 4090, or any GPU with 24GB of VRAM, you have the power to handle the most demanding Flux FP8 workflows effortlessly. In the Dual Clip Loader node, you can download a new clip encoder, an improved version of the OpenAI Clip L. This encoder is significantly better at handling text prompts, so it's worth trying. Just download the HF version and place it in the Clip folder inside your ComfyUI Models folder. Next, in this basic workflow, we have the powerful LoRa Loader node. I really like this node because it lets you add as many LoRas as you want and easily enable or disable them as needed. In the positive prompt, I've made sure to include the trigger words for my LoRas, and I'm using a flux guidance value of 4. For this demonstration, we're generating our AI model, Alara sitting by a fountain with a Hermes Kelly bag by her side, an accessory I've trained for an upcoming video. If you want to train your own Loras and aren't sure how, check out a detailed 30-minute tutorial I've made here on my channel, or visit pixelailabs.com, where you can find a mini-course on the subject. All relevant links are in the description. Using an RTX 3090 with 24 gigabytes of VRAM on my local PC, I can generate an image in just 34 seconds with two LoRa's and the FP8 model from Black Forest, which is my personal go-to. This model provides exceptional detail and clarity, though you might occasionally encounter memory issues, although they're not very frequent. Before we continue, if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. I regularly post free video tutorials on AI digital modeling and fashion using ComfyUI. Also, if you're looking to take your skills further, check out my beginner and intermediate course at pixelailabs.com. It's called The Ultimate Guide to Making Your First AI Digital Model on Stable Diffusion and Flux with Comfy UI. This 100% practical course is fully updated, and you can get it today for just $42. Don't miss out on this offer. For more details, visit pixelailabs.com. The link is in the description. Now let's dive into GGUF models. Similar to the Flux 1 model, GGUF comes in various quantized versions, each offering a different balance between model size, inference speed, and output quality. Quantization is a process that reduces a model's size by compressing it, allowing it to run faster, but this may impact the accuracy of its outputs. When selecting the best model, consider your use case. If you require the highest accuracy and have plenty of computational resources, the F16 version is the way to go. For applications that need high-quality results but with some limitations on resources, the Q8 version is a great compromise. The Q5KS model is an excellent all-rounder, balancing speed and accuracy, making it versatile for general use. If you need faster processing and can accept some reduction in quality, the Q4KS model might work for you. However, I generally don't recommend the Q3 and Q2 versions because it's heavily quantized and can lead to lower quality images. But don't worry, we're going to test all these models on different GPUs to help you see the differences. To start using the Flux Q models, you'll need to install GGUF custom nodes that can handle both the models and the clip text encoders. Head over to the manager, search for GGUF, and then install ComfyUI GGUF. 
Once that's done, restart ComfyUI, and we'll move on to how to download and correctly place your models. For those with 16 to 24 gigabytes of VRAM, the Q8 Flux model is your top choice. You won't encounter memory issues, even when working with complex image prompts and multiple LoRa's. To get started, save the Q8 model file in your Comfy UI models folder under the UNet directory. Next, you'll also need the GGUF text encoder. Be sure to download the Q8 text encoder file and place it in your clip folder inside the models directory. Additionally, to run our workflow, we need the VAE. We'll be using the Black Forest Flux Dev VAE from their official Hugging Face page. Make sure you create an account on Hugging Face and agree to their terms of use since the Flux Dev is for non-commercial purposes. You won't be able to download the file unless you click on the Agree and Access Repository button. Once downloaded, place this file in your VAE folder inside the models directory. To make things easier, I've prepared four basic workflows that you can download from pixelailabs.com. Link is in the description. Since we're focusing on the Q8 model, let's import the JSON file into Comfy UI. Just make sure you restart Comfy UI after installing the GGUF custom nodes. We'll generate the same prompt again to compare the output with the FP8 model. The first thing you'll notice is that the Q8 model runs a bit slower on the same RTX 3090 GPU. With the LoRa's loaded, the model takes around 1 minute and 5 seconds to generate an image. However, the output image is very close in quality to the original model and consumes less VRAM overall. Now, let's move on to the mid-tier GPUs, specifically those with 12 to 16 gigabytes of VRAM. For these GPUs, we need a model that strikes a good balance between performance and efficiency. The Q5KS model offers impressive image quality while being optimized for VRAM usage. Since I don't have an RTX 3080 available here, I'll use RunPod so you can see the results firsthand. I'll deploy an RTX 3080 Ti with 12 gigabytes of VRAM using the RunPod SD Comfy UI template. I'll edit the storage settings and expose port 8188 so we can run Comfy UI on this pod. Once the connect button is enabled, it means our pod is ready. All we need to do is open Jupyter. In a new terminal pointed to the workspace folder, I've prepared commands that you can copy and paste into the terminal to install everything you need to run the Q8, Q5, and Q4 GGUF models. You'll only need to change the access key to download the VAE from the official Flux page on Hugging Face. Make sure you've agreed to their terms, then create a read access token in your Hugging Face account settings. Copy the key they provide and replace it with the key in my file to enable the VAE download. Once that's done, copy everything from the text file, paste it into a new terminal, and hit enter. That's it. Now, you just need to wait around 10 to 12 minutes and everything will be installed and ready to use. When you see a local address with port 8188 displayed, it means Comfy UI is running. To access it, return to your running pod and click Connect. Don't click on the HTTP service port 3000 option. Instead, go to the TCP port mapping tab and copy the IP address and port from there. In a new browser tab, paste the IP address followed by a colon and the port number, and Comfy UI will start. Everything will be ready to use. Once you're in, drag and drop the Q5 workflow and you can start generating images without any hassle. For a 12GB VRAM graphics card, it takes around 1 minute and 5 seconds to generate an image, even with two LoRa's, which is quite efficient. The output quality is impressive. Not quite as high as the Q8 model, but still very good, making it an excellent option for mid-tier GPUs, which are more accessible and affordable for many users. If you're running Comfy UI locally, the installation process for all GGUF models is exactly the same. Now, moving on to low-end GPUs. If your GPU has between 4 to 10 gigabytes of VRAM, the Q4KS model is the best choice for you. 
It's designed for users with GPUs like the NVIDIA GTX 1660, RTX 2060, A2000, or similar low-end cards. This model is optimized for low VRAM usage, allowing it to run smoothly even on older hardware. As demonstrated here, I've installed the Q4KS model on an RTX A2000 with 6GB of VRAM. It takes around 1 minute and 41 seconds to generate an image without LoRaS at a 1024x1024 resolution. The output image is a good quality. And when you add LoRaS, the generation time increases to about 2 minutes and 21 seconds on this 6GB VRAM card. As you can see, incorporating LoRaS improves the output capturing our AI model Ilara and the Hermes handbag accurately. If you want to save a few seconds, you can lower the resolution to 512 by 512 and adjust the flux guidance. But keep in mind this will compromise the image quality, so I don't recommend it unless absolutely necessary. To wrap things up, no matter what GPU you have, there's a flux model that's perfect for your setup. High-end GPUs should opt for the Q8 or FP8 models, while mid-range GPUs will find the Q5KS models ideal. For low-end GPUs, you can still run FluxDev and load LoRaS, unlike the NF4 model, which doesn't support this. That's all for today's video. I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you're a beginner or intermediate user and want to dive deeper into AI image generation using Comfy UI, I invite you to check out my course, The Ultimate Guide to AI Digital Modeling on Stable Diffusion and Flux with Comfy UI. This course will guide you step by step in creating your first AI digital model for Instagram or TikTok. It's fully updated and available today for just $42. For more information, visit pixelailabs.com. The link is in the description.